Hi and welcome to Peacemake TV. In today's video we're going to be checking out a free alternative to Visual Composer. If you don't know what Visual Composer is, it's a commercial add-on for WordPress that allows anybody to get creative using a drag and drop environment to create complicated looking page layouts with minimal effort. So a free alternative is something that a lot of people are going to like. So we're going to check that out now give it a little look over to see exactly where it offers and how it compares to some of the commercial options available like Visual Composer. So this free add-on for WordPress is called Elementor and the link for this is in the description below and I recommend if you have a demonstration site to download it, try it out and see exactly what it's like in a non-live environment to see how you get on with it. So as you can see, it's a completely free download. It's got a website backing it up. We've got docs, so we can find out exactly how to use all the different options. And I'd recommend, like I say, downloading it and trying it out. See exactly what's on offer there. So I've got a demonstration site set up. I've got it installed. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new page and I'm gonna show you just some of the functions that are available in this add-on. So let's go through to our pages section and let's create a new page. And we'll just call this Elemental. Now, if you've used Visual Composer before, then certain aspects of this are going to seem quite familiar. So let's start by enabling the editor and take a look at what we have available to us. Give it a couple of seconds to load and you'll see what we now presented with is a full page editor. We no longer have the admin section of WordPress available to us. We can switch back to that if we want to. But we now have a dedicated editor screen where any changes we make will be seen live on screen in front of us. So if you've ever used Visual Composer and the front-end editor, it's very similar to that in the way that you can see this and you can work in the front-end. It's also very similar to an optimizer theme, which has its own built-in visual editor that works in a very similar fashion. So if you've used any of these, then you're going to start to feel at home in the way this all works. So as you can see down the left-hand side, we have a range of widgets that we can choose from. And these are being expanded quite regularly. So expect every new version of this that comes out it's going to have something new to offer. So you'll see that if we take our mouse over any of these elements that are already placed on the page, you can see we can have two separate options in the top left hand corner. We've got the ability to edit the column and by clicking on that we can expand that out and you can see we can copy, we can add an extra element in there or a new column in there and we can close it and get rid of it completely. If we click on section we can use that to drag it around and we can copy the section or we can delete the section. We've also got a little symbol in the corner on the right hand side that tells us the exact width of this particular element and as you start to move around and resize elements this can be quite useful to make sure that you've got everything laid out the way you want it to be. You also see on the left hand side now that we have some options available when we select any of these elements. You can see when we switch between no elements selected then all of the elements and the widgets and things are available on the left hand side and once we select one of these columns and we click on its top left hand corner you can see we now have the option to control the way that that's actually viewed so we can adjust things like the background type add a border to it the border radius we can control the typography in there the text alignment and so on so we've got a range of options we can also switch over to the advanced section and you can see we can control margins and padding in there we can control animations of which there are quite a few to choose from so you can choose how that particular element animates in if you wanted to. And you've also got the option for CSS classes if you want to target those independently of exactly what's going on on the site. You've also got responsive underneath and you can see we've got some options available to us in there. I'm not going to go into too much detail with all of this because I just want to give you an overview of what this product actually offers you. However, we may look at adding some tutorials further down the line on the channel if we find this a viable product to work with. So let's take a look at adding some content in. We've got one of these sections, so let's just add one of the widgets in there and let's start off with something simple like an image. We just drag it over, drop it onto the interface and you can see now the options that are applicable to that particular widget or element are now available in the left hand side, broken up into tabs if relevant and each one of those may have additional sections which you can expand and contract quite, quite easily. We've also got advanced options available for that which we can actually go in and control some of those advanced features. So let's start off with just adding some content into this and just seeing how it, it works and how quick it is because one of the things that they're sort of selling this product on is the fact it's very, very quick to work with. So keep an eye on that while we use it. Now, bear in mind, I am working on a local machine which is very, very fast and the 
real-time use of this when you're on a server may not be quite so quick. I'll test that out in a different video and we'll see how it stacks up in a live environment. But for now, like I say, let's take a look at what it offers us. So let's choose an image. We can just click and add that. We'll just choose an image from the ones available on my server. Insert the media and you can see that's now added that into the top section. If we wanted to, we can add links in there. So we can say we want to link to nothing, a media file or a custom URL. Depending on what we click on, gives us a range of options what we can do. You can also specify whether it was in a new tab or not, whether it's just sort of an internal link or an external link, which is quite neat and, uh, and tidy. If we want to change the style, we can do that. We can adjust the size, the opacity, which again is quite useful. If we want to add a caption to this, we can do that. You can see we can specify where the caption is aligned, the center, the text color, the typography is being used. If we choose custom, you can see it opens up a whole new range of options where we can fine tune the actual font that's being used. And at any point when you want to see what this looks like on your page, if you click on this arrow, the preview arrow, that'll minimize the left hand column and also get rid of all the visual elements you see on screen and allow you to see what your page is going to look like without the clutter of the editor all over the place. So we can click on the arrow to bring that back in and you can see that puts everything back into place and we can carry on editing. So let's just say I want to add some more widgets into this. I can now just leave this one where I've, I've finished with it and I can come down, I can click and add a new section or I can drag a widget directly into this the section uh, below our image. So let's click on add a new section and you can see that now allows us to create multiple different choices. So we've got 12 different layouts available to us which we can choose from. We can edit those afterwards but for now we can choose one of these as a starting point. So let's just say for example I want to work with a three column layout. I can click on that. That puts my three element blocks in there. You can see I can adjust these columns by clicking and choosing to copy it or add a new column in there or remove it completely. I can click on the plus in the center to add in a new element and add a widget directly into this. And if I want to, I can resize any of these by simply dragging the arrow over and you can see the adjacent box will adjust itself and you can see now where the percentage in the top right hand corner of this particular element is gonna become quite useful when you're working out on sizes. So that's quite useful and we can let go of that and you can see that now puts into position and we've resized that one. If we want to, we can now click and add a new element in there. So let's click and you see that it brings the widgets up on the right, sorry, on the left hand side, at which we can now go through and we can find exactly what we want in there. You'll notice that we're not limited to just widgets that are part of Elementor. You can see if we scroll down, we've got a range of options that are WordPress native functions. So you've got things like we can add page links in there, archive links, search functionality, text, recent posts, RSS feeds, and custom menus and things like that. So we've got a range of different tools that are all available to us. And as you can see, it's a very, very easy to deal with interface. So let's just say, for example, now I want to put some text in there. I can simply come up click on text editor and I can drag that over, drop it on my first box and you see that now brings up a small text editor where we can use the visual editor or we can use the text editor, editor which is very much native to the WordPress editor. You can see we've also got style available to us so we can adjust things like the text color and again we can adjust the typography in there so we may want to change this on a sort of element by element basis and we can do that quite easily so we can say let's make that a little bit smaller you can see you've also got the option to work with various different size uh, measurements. So we've got pixels, M's and REMs, and we can just put the values in there or we can use the toggle up and down. You can see we can change the font family and we have a whole range of fonts available to us in there. Obviously these are Google fonts and things. So we've got a range that we can work with. So let's just say I wanted to put railway in there. If we've got that available, there we go. I can click on that. Automatically changes the font very, very quickly. We can adjust the weight of that font. And let's just say we want to go for something a little little heavier. Do you want to transform it to uppercase, lowercase or capitalize it? And we can also choose the style, whether it be normal, italic or oblique. And we can adjust the line height. So let's make that a little bit further apart. So we got a little bit more breathing space in there. And let's just change the font size. Let's take that a bit bigger. And let's just center it. So you can see it's very, very quick and easy in a very visual fashion to make these changes, which in all honesty is, is, is pretty good. I quite like that. So let's just say now that I want to copy this section. I don't want to go through setting all those settings again a second time. So I can just click on this element. You can see when you click, you get a context menu. And what we can do now is we can say duplicate this and we'll do the same again. We'll click duplicate it. And now we can click and drag that over to the second box and do the same for the third box. 
So now we could just easily go into any of those sections, click, click on the edit option, and now we can edit the text that's actually in there and do whatever we want with it without having to go through the entire process of changing all the settings again for each one of those elements, which again is a great little sort of speed and time saving option. So let's just go and take a look at some of the other options available to us. Let's just click to add another section and we'll say in this we're going to add in a full width section and we'll click to add a new element to that. And we'll come down and we'll just insert a Google map. So let's just drag that over and drop it. You can see that will automatically load in a default section and you can see on the left hand side now we have a range of options available to us for this particular map. So we can insert an address, we can adjust the zoom level on this, let that refresh. And we can adjust the height of the element. Do we want to allow for scrolls? In other words, when you take your mouse over this, is it going to focus on that window area, which can be a bit of a bugbear if you are using this as a sort of full width section. It can be a little bit annoying, so you can control whether you're allowed to scroll inside that window or not, which is, is a great little function. And again, you've got the advanced option where we can go in and we can adjust and put borders and things on there. So we can say, let's have a dotted border on there. And we'll say that the width is going to be one pixel. Seven, one. And what color do you want that to be? Well, let's go for a medium gray. And we want to have a border radius. Let's just say we'll have a border radius of four. And we can put a box shadow in if we want as well and have some extra options available to us there. So you can see very quick, very easy. Hit save and that will save that options. So our page has now been saved out. Let's just say, for example, we want to take a look at that. Again, we can just contract this preview, get rid of all those extra elements on the page and see exactly what's going on. Expand that back out and see what it looks like and go and carry on editing. What we can also do, if we come to the bottom, you can see we've got a couple of different options. We've got exit, which will take us back into WordPress and the page we were previously working on. We've got responsive mode, which will allow us to go and preview this page on a range of different responsive screen layouts. And we've also got the help option and finally the save option for when you make any changes to your page. So let's take a look at the responsive mode and take a look at what that actually offers us. So when we hit responsive mode, it's going to open up a menu that gives us a range of five different options. You can see we've got desktop, laptop, tablet, mobile landscape and mobile portrait. It also tells us the actual dimensions of the screen resolution that we were looking at on this particular mock-up. So let's just say, for example, we want to take a look at what this looked like on a mobile in landscape. We can click. And it'll show us exactly what that's like and we can now interact with the page as if we're using a mobile device. If we want to change that over to mobile and portrait, we can do that. Landscape. You can also see that we can develop the actual page itself inside this preview version. So if we were working for mobile first or we want to limit this particular design for a mobile device or something, then we can design it with that in mind directly on screen, which again is a great little useful feature. If we want to go back, we just simply hit desktop and that'll take us back to our full screen view. So you'll see when we click on the exit button, we now have two options available. We can view the page or we can go back to the dashboard. So let's just say go to dashboard and that'll take us back into WordPress. So now let's hit publish to save that page out and publish it to our website and then we can take a look at it. So let's click on preview changes and there's our page all laid out as we'd expect. Now there is one thing that I'm not overly fussed on when you're working with Elementor, and that's the fact that when we've created a page in the admin with Elementor, you'll see if we've got the Elementor editor enabled, we don't actually get to see the content of the page. So we can't see any layout. So if we quickly scan through the pages or you just want to sort of see what kind of layout you've got, like you do with Visual Composer and Divi and things like that, you can't actually see it. You've got to either click on Edit with Elementor to bring it back up and carry on editing your page, or click back to WordPress Editor where you'll lose any of the styling that's been applied as part of the Elementor layout. So that could do with some work, if I'm honest about it. I would say that you need to have some kind of visual way of seeing that in the back end of the website just to make your life that little bit easier when you're going through and you want to see if you need to edit a page or not without having to invoke the end element or editor. Now it is very, very fast to work with, so it's not the end of the world, but it is something to bear in mind if you're used to working with Visual Composer that you won't see that layout without invoking the editor. So that was just a short overview of the free page builder called Elementor. 
I would recommend checking it out because it is a very, very good piece of software and the fact that it's free and a great alternative to Visual Composer makes it even more appealing. So download it, check it out, give it a go, see what you think of it. Let me know in the comments section below if you find it a useful piece of software. If you find this plugin makes your life just a little bit easier when you're working with creating pages with WordPress. Well, that's this video concluded. If you've got any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. Well, until next time. Take care.